Welcome to Graphics Flow. In this training video, we're going to dig into the My Art Workspace. Now, when you log in your Graphics Flow account, by default, you'll always arrive at My Art. And of course, on the left hand side is where you can navigate to all the different workspaces in Graphics Flow. Now, let's give you a general orientation and overview of the key features and functions available in the My Art Workspace. Now, principally speaking, My Art is the workspace that you're going to use to upload and manage and organize all of your graphic content. Now, when I say graphic content, this means customer supplied logos and brand assets. So if you're dealing with a corporate client and they send you all of their official and approved you know, identity assets, of course, you can upload and manage that content. But the other way to think about graphics content is the content that you create on behalf of your clients, their needs and their projects. So anything that's graphic related can be stored and organized and managed in this workspace. Now, starting at the very top, you'll notice that we have two key options here, tags and the ability to search and refine our tag results. So tags are custom keywords that you can create and assign to all of your uploaded graphic content. Tags are a useful way to segment, to organize and to find your content. So again, think of tags as a custom keyword. Now here's some tips when using tags. Think of using tags as a way to segment customers by type. So you can see in my tags dropdown, we have camp, church, corporate logos, customer supplied. You can get very specific with subject matter like field hockey or government, nonprofits. So you know this would be an important exercise. Sit down with your team, construct the standard tags that you think will be most commonly used and this is a great way to get more value from Graphics Flow and managing your content. In a moment's time, I'll show you where to create and assign tags to any of your uploaded content. So as you're looking for files, you can use tags in the tag dropdown. You can search tags by name. So if I start to type in something like C, I'll get any tags that have C in them. As I begin typing in more, it becomes refined, right? So if I type in camp, only tags that have camp in them will you know, sort of respond here. So I can select whichever tags I want to see in filtered results. I can click out of this workspace and Graphics Flow is automatically going to uh, refine and showcase any uploaded content that have those particular tags. Now I'll point out at any time you can click to dismiss a tag and I can also filter. So I have the ability to type in a search term that might be in the artwork name or the description. And that's a great way to filter and refine my results. So for example, if I type in life, because I'm looking at one file here that says camper life outdoor club, if I type in life, that's going to refine the results I have to really focus on a more narrow uh, array of results. So really quick and easy way to find content that's segmented by keyword, in this case, tags. So that's how you will use tags to really refine and see results on screen. Now going to the top right, you'll notice search my art. This is a global search. So if I click in here, I can then begin to type in a search term. And as soon as I type in a term, I'm going to start getting results on screen. Now these are going to be all of the matching results. So it could be a folder and it could be files. So this will search all of your content in the my art workspace. This is a quick way to just do a keyword search and find matching content. So whether it be a general search using the very top function or using filters and refinement, you can see powerful ways to find the right files to get the job done. Now, as we move along, let's move down to the bottom, which is the folders area. Now, there's a few ways to create new folders. Now, principally, a folder is, as the name implies, it's a way to begin to organize content. And it's a very flexible way to organize content. Now here's what we typically recommend as a best practice for managing and organizing your files. Naming the first primary parent folder as the client name. And so you'll notice here I can create a new folder and I can just give this uh, arbitrary name, you know, whatever's uh, sort of relevant here. So name this, um, you know, so your team can recognize it, be clear, be concise. So I can create a folder and once that folder is generated, it's going to display. Now I can go into that folder and I can begin to create additional folders. So our recommendation is to create a folder for your client and then you can create subfolders for different projects. And then within a project folder, you can create production file folders. So in this example, I'll just put a placeholder here. I'll put uh, project number one 
and I'll create a folder. I could go into that project and I can create subfolders. So I could put in things like you know, screen print files and I could create that subfolder. So folders become a way to clearly and easily manage files by client, by project name, and you could even choose to organize files by production method. And that gives you and your team a simple yet highly organized way of managing files. Now remember, all of this content, no matter which folder it lives in, will become keyword searchable, and this is where tags also become very valuable. So that's the notion of folders, a really flexible way to choose how you'll manage and organize content. Now, I'll, I'll point out sort of the two ways to, to create a folder. You'll notice where it says folders, I, there's a little plus icon. I can click to create a new folder. The other option at the very right, you'll see an orange button. And if I click that orange button, you have two options here. I can upload a file or I can create a folder. So those are the two ways to construct a folder. Now I'll point out as we continue in this navigation, you can visualize all of your folders and content uh, in different ways. You can do alphabetical, reverse alphabetical, recent first and oldest first. This is a great way to sort of sort and look at your content in different manners, oldest, uh, again, alphabetical. You also have a grid versus list view. And so there's an icon here where you can toggle between a grid view and a list view. And so you can scroll, uh, you know, depending on, on what's at you know, hand here, you can choose which orientation is best for you. All right, so now that we've talked about folders, let's kind of wrap up uh, what there is to know about folders. Notice if I hover my mouse over a folder, you have two options here. I can select the folder, and then you'll see the other option is a series of ellipse icons where I get additional controls. I can rename a folder. I can choose to move a folder. I can download all the contents of a folder, and I can choose to delete. So choose whatever action is appropriate. You know, these are all pretty commonsensical. I will spend a moment here talking about move. So sometimes in your organizational system, you'll, you'll decide there's probably a better way to manage a particular folder. So you're always gonna have the flexibility to click move where you can choose to take a folder and move it uh, you know, and associate it to say a different you know, folder structure. So I can expand uh, a folder and subfolders and choose where I wanna relocate a particular folder. So very easy way to reorganize your content as you're working. So that's what there is to know about folders, as you can see, really straightforward. One other quick pro tip here is I can take a folder and I can drag and drop it onto another folder. So left mouse click, and by holding down the left mouse button, I can take one folder and drop it onto another one, and that's another way to move. And the last function here is selecting a folder, and I can select multiple folders in common. So in this case, I've just selected three folders, and I get a series of actions in the actions bar. And again, I can do things in bulk. So I can affect one folder, but I can multi-select folders and I get very similar controls, move, download, delete. So very powerful functions uh, that are available here in terms of bulk editing. So with that said, let's now go to the bottom. And I wanna make a distinction between folders, which again is you're gonna be your organizational system. And then right below that, you're gonna see files. Think of files as a temporary storage area. So these are individual files that you've uploaded into your graphics flow, my art workspace, but you've not yet made a decision about how you wanna sort of catalog and store those in a folder. So really files become a very useful way to immediately back up your content into the cloud so it's safe, it's secure, uh, it's backed up so there's no risk of, you know, if your computer's stolen or if you have a malware circumstance, your content is now safe and secure but you're not forced to make any decisions about how you wanna store and organize. You can now do that at a later time. So with your files, you can click the little uh, gray icon next to files where you can browse your computer and you know, uh, you know, find files and upload them. Or back to that orange button at the top right, you can select upload file. And again, you're gonna get the same ability to browse your computer, multi-select files and upload in bulk. Now the last function here, you can actually just minimize your screen and go to your desktop you can grab files and drag and drop them onto this workspace. So there's actually three ways to introduce files right into the files workspace. Now, there's a few functions you can do here. Notice if I hover my mouse over a file, I can select and I can multi-select just like I showed you with the files function. So here I can click the actions dropdown and I have a series of actions to move, add to an art approval, 
download the art content, edit tags, so you can edit tags in bulk, which is a very handy way to either remove or assign new searchable tags to any of the selected art content. And you can also choose to bulk delete. Now, the other functions you have at each individual asset is you have that same ellipse control where you get additional function. So I can add a file directly to an art approval. I can rename an art file. I can move a file, edit the tags. I can download and delete. So really straightforward. Now, one other little action that you can do with an art file is you can actually click on an art file. So I'm just gonna click sort of in the center here of one of the art previews, and that takes me to the detail view. And at the detail view, I can do a number of things. So starting at the very top, I can add an art file to an art approval. And this is gonna be an existing art approval that's already generated. And we'll show you how to create art approvals in a follow-up video here. So I can search for an existing art approval make a selection and add that file directly to an existing art approval. Now the next thing I can do is I can edit the art file name at any time. So sometimes you'll receive a customer supplied file, it's gonna have some cryptic name convention. So it's always nice to be able to rename a file to make it more logical and more clear. So at any point in time you can click in the title and you can alter uh, the name as you see fit. Now right below that is description and as the name implies this is where you can add a logical description for the file. So this is a great place to add sort of general notes about the art. You maybe make references to the production method the artwork was created for, ink mixing instructions, um, you know, whatever is relevant. Now right below that is art tags. As mentioned earlier, tags are custom keywords that you can create and assign to any of your uploaded art. So what I can do in tags is I can begin to type something in. So in this case, this is uh, maybe um, something for a youth camp. So I can type in youth and notice Graphics Flow doesn't recognize youth. So I'm gonna finish this off by typing in youth camp. Notice I get a prompt to create a new tag called youth camp. So I'll go ahead and create that brand new tag. Now I'm gonna enter in a tag I know already exists like camp. So when I start to type something in, Graphics Flow shows me any matches that might be relevant. So I can go ahead and make that selection. So think of using tags, keep them simple, keep them highly specific and relevant, and then make sure to train your team on the common tags that we use to segment artwork by client type, by subject matter, by theme. Again, this becomes a very powerful way to organize your content as you add more content to Graphics Flow. Now, right below tags, I have Tag Manager, and this is the area that allows me to do a number of things. Manage tags, so I can see the tags by name, how many of these tags are associated to files. I can do things like add tags, so maybe you wanna sit down and be very thoughtful and intentional and create an array of tags sort of in one motion. So here, I can create tags in advance and supply those as tags that my team can use as they're working. Now at any point in time, you can edit a tag. So if there's a misspelling or you wanna clarify the name or make a modification, you can change the tag name and save and update those changes. And lastly, I have the ability to delete a tag. So if you wanna just remove a tag because it's becoming you know, clutter or noise, you have the option to do that. Now a few other key functions in this area, notice under Art Details, and I'm gonna roll up some of these workspaces here so we can focus. Under our details, I can assign and create different decoration methods. So here I can assign the decoration method that maybe this art file was prepared for. So you'll notice I can assign from a dropdown so I can choose any ones that I've already sort of uh, created in advance and I can make those selections here. But you'll notice at the very bottom of this workspace, I have the ability to add or edit decoration methods. So just like with that tag manager, you can see an array of all the different decoration methods you have. At any point in time, you have the ability to add a decoration method. So I'm gonna do you know, digital um, you know, uh, film transfer. Um, and so I can go ahead and create a new uh, decoration method. I can edit that decoration method at any point in time and I can delete those just like you saw with the tag manager. So our suggestion is always you know, spend the extra time and be intentional about the art name, the description, the tags, and the details because this becomes searchable content. It becomes a silo of knowledge that your whole team can tap into. So the quality of data on the onset means you're gonna have quality of data you know, uh, sort of in the future. Now to conclude this workspace, of course I can enter in the file height and width uh, in terms of a unit of measure and you're free to choose between inches, centimeters, millimeters. You can also add the art the, or the colors that are in the art file. So I could add a color name and choose a thumbnail to represent that particular color. So this is a great place to log PMS colors. You'll know, be very specific with the name of the color uh, just to document that in the file. 
And the last function at the very bottom is file details. And this is where I can see, as the name implies, the original details when we uploaded the file. So the original name, the type, you know, the size, created, modified, and of course the dimensions, the original dimensions of the file. So that is the art sort of uh, detail screen that you have here. There is another ellipse function here where you can download the art and you can delete the art. So be very careful. Also point out you can collapse this if you really want to focus. So top right icon allows you to collapse that detail pane so you can just really concentrate on the art file itself. And of course you have a little informational uh, option here to again invoke that uh, you know, information pane. Now at the very top left, there's a little back arrow where I can go back to the My Art Workspace. So in summary, we've covered all of the key functions and workflow and detail that's involved with My Art, but I'll summarize why it's important to really start to take advantage of this workspace. You know, ransomware, failed hard drives, malware, you know, theft, loss. There's so many things that can go wrong when storing digital content. But Graphics Flow offers a cloud-based, secured, backed up way to manage and organize your content securely. So make it a priority in your business and amongst your team members to begin to fully leverage all of the art content storage capabilities in Graphics Flow because that just means greater security and the greater ability to find content quickly and accurately using global search and using tags. The other thing to point out here is when you're uploading your content, Graphics Flow represents previews for all of the uploaded files. So if you're uploading a Corel file, an Adobe Illustrator, Photoshop file, embroidery formats, Graphics Flow is going to generate a preview, which means your, your team is going to be able to see an Adobe Illustrator or Corel file without having to download the file. So that's another key advantage of the My Art workspace compared to other third-party storage solutions. So from a risk reduction strategy perspective, from a simplicity and ensuring your team has access to content, obviously this workspace provides a tremendous degree of value. Now, if you ever have questions, if you ever need help, make certain to reach out to the Graphics Flow support team. I just wanna call out one final thing before we conclude this video. At the upper right of any workspace, you'll have this little question mark icon, which is where you can access help and resources. There you can access our help center, you can tap into all of our training videos, you can give us feedback. So make sure to take full advantage of our help center and our support team at any point that you have questions or need insights.